Good morning. Aujourd'hui, les conservateurs du Canada demandent au gouvernement libéral de répondre à la crise du logement. Il est temps d'interdire aux investisseurs étrangers d'acheter de l'immobilier canadien. Cela augmente les prix alors que les propriétés restent vides. Pour construire de nouvelles habitations, il faut utiliser des propriétés fédérales et il faut que les libéraux annulent leur plan pour taxer les ventes de votre maison. Today, Canada's Conservatives are calling on the Liberal government to finally address the housing crisis. It's time to stop foreign investors from buying Canadian real estate, driving up prices while many of the homes sit empty. It's time to make federal property available for new homes to be built, and for the Liberals to finally abandon their plan to tax the sale of your home. With Christmas just 16 days away, it's supposed to be a time to celebrate with family and friends, to enjoy the warmth and hope of the season. But Canadians are worried. They're worried about housing, worried about the cost of living crisis, worried about the stability of their job, and worried about what all this means for their children. Justin Trudeau and his deputies libéraux ne veulent pas parler de la hausse de l'inflation. Surtout, ils ne veulent pas avouer que leur programme de taxes et que leurs dépenses élevées augmentent les coûts. Cela augmente les prix de tous les produits essentiels, comme l'essence, l'épicerie et le loyer, mais les salaires n'augmentent pas. Canadians see their paychecks are flat, only up an average of about 2%, while inflation is almost 5%. That means the average Canadian family has taken a 3% pay cut this year. Merry Christmas from the Liberal government. And so Canadians at kitchen tables across the country are worried that no help is coming. The Trudeau economy is becoming unaffordable for working families, and it looks like the government hasn't noticed. The same is true for housing. After six years of promises and half a trillion dollars of debt, Canadians are facing a cost of living crisis and a government that is completely out of touch. Justin Trudeau just doesn't get it and he can't relate to the worries that are facing Canadian families. Too many Canadians fear they will never be able to own a home. Young families are struggling to pay for rising rents and are giving up on the idea of home ownership. Just yesterday, a survey said that half of Canadians under 30 have already given up on the idea of owning a home. And retired empty nesters, our seniors, can't find a place that fits their needs. Nationwide, the average price for housing reached $716,000 in October. That's a jump of $54,000 in just a few months. And worse, according to Remax, real estate prices are expected to surge another 9.2% next year, just in time for the Bank of Canada to raise interest rates. And what is the Liberals' proposed solution for their out-of-control spending? How will they try and pay for the radical agenda? They plan to tax the sale of your home. This tax would strip away money Canadians rely on for their retirement. It targets hard-working Canadians who've saved their whole lives without actually helping address the housing crisis. Canada's Conservatives have been saying this all along. Building more homes is the best long-term sustainable solution to making housing more affordable. We need more supply. Here in Ottawa, the president of the local real estate board says that housing inventory is, quote, simply not enough. The only way we will find balance in Ottawa's market is to increase the housing stock exponentially, end quote. The same can be said in any Canadian city. Canadians don't need more fancy announcements. They don't need more taxes to go up, and they certainly don't need more empty rhetoric from Mr. Trudeau. What they need is a real plan to finally start addressing the housing crisis in Canada. That's why Conservatives are putting forward concrete proposals to boost Canada's housing supply, including releasing at least 15% of the federal government's massive real estate holdings for residential development. By limiting foreign investors from buying homes if they don't plan to live here, so they can stop adding to the rising cost for those that do plan to live here. And 
by ensuring that the Liberals step back from their plans to tax your home. These are just some practical steps that we know would boost supply and would bring the dream of home ownership within reach of so many more Canadians. C'est comme ça qu'on bâtit des communautés fortes et solides. On doit aider les jeunes à devenir propriétaires. On doit leur donner les outils pour établir des bases solides pour très longtemps. Et on doit s'assurer que les jeunes familles peuvent rester dans les quartiers et les villages où elles ont grandi. Today and every day, Canada's Conservatives will be a voice for the millions of Canadian families that are increasingly being left behind in Justin Trudeau's economy. Whether you're already a homeowner or whether you're a renter hoping to become one, we hope the other parties in Parliament will join us in protecting your home and protecting your future. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Good morning, Mr. O'Toole. Stephanie Levitz, the Toronto Star, and I hope you'll stay to take all of the questions in the room today. Um, I'd like to know, in your view, if it's discrimination if a woman wearing a hijab is told she's not allowed to teach a class of grade three students. Well, I've said since becoming leader that I personally uh, oppose Bill 21 and the measures in it. I've also said that I will try and respect provincial jurisdiction and the competencies of the provincial governments to make decisions like in the case of Quebec. So what I've tried to do is um, talk to the Premier about my personal views and also then try and find areas of common cause where we can work together. But this is, a, this is an issue that is best left for Quebecers to decide, but I think you can talk about your personal views as I have. You, you say you want to be a voice for all Canadians, so what's your message directly to the woman in this particular instance? who has been told because of her religious beliefs she is not allowed to be a teacher? Well, as I said, this will be an important debate that Quebecers will take themselves, the debate about the role of state secularism. And there is a, an instance, as one of my own MPs commented today, not far from Parliament Hill, uh, there's someone who's limited in the workplace. But this is a provincial area of, of responsibility and jurisdiction. And as I've said, I've raised with the Premier my, my personal views on this, and I've also said I would try and, and work on areas of common cause, not to focus on areas of difference, but on areas where we can work together. Hi, Mr. O'Toole. Rachel Haynes from CTV National News. And I'm also going to be following up on the same topic that my colleague Steph was there. Um, as um, Steph mentioned, your message has always been um, that everybody is welcome here in Canada, wearing uh, religious outfits and items that is, you know, a uh, charter of rights there with the freedom of expression, freedom of religion. So even though this bill is in Quebec, as a federal leader, do you not have a role to play in telling Canadians that they are all welcome here? Well, what I've said as a federal leader is that I would not introduce legislation like this on a federal basis. Um, and it, when I've raised my, my concerns about it uh, on a personal level with the Quebec Premier, it has been in that, in that way. Let's find areas where we can work together and respect areas where there's difference. And secularism is a debate that's been underway in Quebec for probably the last 15 to 20 years. And it's for the National Assembly of Quebec to decide. But I can rest assured that uh, federally, we would never apply a bill like this uh, on a federal jurisdiction. And what kind of message does that send to children? I mean, this was a, a grade three teacher who was removed because of what she wore. What does that send to young Canadian children that their teacher can't even work in their school anymore because of what religion they follow? Well, I understand um, the, the teacher at question is working in the school, but not in the classroom. I do think we have to try and have these discussions in a way that is respectful. I think as I've said in my time serving in the Canadian Armed Forces, I saw people of all backgrounds, all faiths, uh, all cultures, putting their job in uniform, putting the country first. That's what's forged my own view and why I don't agree with the, the, the secular tenets of Bill 21. But it is a question for Quebec to decide. And I do think we have to make sure that everyone uh, is respectful and respected in these discussions about secularism. Hi, Mr. Tool, Stephanie Taylor with the Canadian Press. You say you want to broaden the tent of the Conservative Party, so why should racialized Canadians think you stand up for them? 
Well, because from the first moment I became leader, I tried to say, regardless of what day of the week you may worship or if you don't have a faith at all, whatever your cultural background, your race, creed, you're welcome in our party. And we've tried to recruit incredible candidates in all parts of our country. We had the most diverse slate. We had the most women in the last election, sadly. And as you know, Stephanie, we didn't win. So not enough of them be became MPs. But we're going to continue that work. And uh, our, our motion in the House yesterday on Afghanistan was one way we're standing up for um, the Afghan di diaspora here in Canada, which has been demanding accountability with the Liberal government. But don't you think your stance on Bill 21 and this specific incident might hamper that ability to reach more racialized Canadians and Canadians that are concerned about this legislation? Because what you're saying right now is, I'm not going to touch it. That's Mr. Legault's problem. Well, my view is the exact same as the Prime Minister's and Mr. Singh's. Um, so this is an area where federal leaders have said uh, what their approach would be on federal jurisdiction and would respect provincial uh, the provincial competencies. That's that's will be my approach. But I've also tried to add my personal context to to my own personal views, so that we can have a, an important discussion. And this will be a decision that the National Assembly in Quebec will make. Quebecers will make. And I think as long as we have these conversations in a way that's respectful, that will uh, uh, that will allow those discussions to take place in Quebec. Good morning, Campbell Clark, from the Globe and Mail. Mr. O'Toole, your shadow finance minister has made a number of statements asserting that the Bank of Canada has succumbed to political interference and has allowed itself to be used as a tool of government fiscal policy. Yesterday he tweeted, the Liberals had the central bank pump cheap credit into financial markets to make it easier for government to borrow. Do you agree with that statement? Well, as you know, Campbell, uh, quantitative easing was done to make sure that the Canadian uh, government could fund their programs uh, throughout the crisis, throughout the pandemic. What, what was matching was essentially the, the ability for that to match the massive spending of the federal government. So what it, what it has done is put a liability on the backs of the next generation that is tremendous. And interest rates could go up five times next year according to some experts. The debt the Liberal government has accumulated, half a trillion dollars, is real. It is, you know, quantitative easing is, was a tool used um, by, by several governments, but that is a liability that is on our backs. And I think it's incumbent on Justin Trudeau to put a plan forward to get that massive spending out under control and, and to address housing, as I've talked about today. There's a distinction between what you were talking about and what I asked. What I asked was about whether there was political interference and whether the Bank of Canada has given up its independence to act as a tool of government fiscal policy. That's what your finance, your shadow finance minister says. Do you agree? I, I think there is independence. But with quantitative easing, what the bank had to do was make sure that there was liquidity to match the out-of-control spending of Justin Trudeau. So I will hold... Mr. Trudeau and Ms. Freeland to account for putting Canada in a situation where we spent per capita more than any other country in the pandemic response and have some of the most marginal results. Um, there, are, there are huge liabilities coming home to roost for Canada in the next year. We're already seeing the housing and cost of living crisis. Interest rates going up will essentially mean billions and billions more in interest payments that take away the, the government's ability to build up our, our health care system, help with mental health. There's real risks to the Trudeau overspending, and we're going to continue to hold, hold the line on that. Good morning, Mr. O'Toole. Uh, Dylan Robertson of the Winnipeg Free Press. Uh, you've described virtual parliament as, quote, phoning it in. So why is it okay for MPs like Ted Falk to not bother showing up? Well, as you know, Dylan, we opposed the hybrid parliament. Um, our big concern with what the Trudeau government did with hybrid par parliament was limit debate, limit scrutiny, limit transparency on their conduct. They haven't really even accounted for how almost half a trillion dollars has been spent. Um, we lost that debate, as you know. Um, it was only us in the Bloc Québécois that wanted full parliament to return as normal. So all MPs now have the ability to use 
the hybrid parliament. If there's a debate to limit that ahead of the the expiry of this this hybrid parliament next spring, we will once again take the position that we think it should return to normal with all the proper health provisions in place. Ms. Bergen said that you won't do hybrid caucus meetings. So are these MPs not attending these meetings? Well, I don't talk about uh, what happens in our caucus meetings, but I can assure you we hear from all voices as part of our caucus meetings. And the one we had this week, uh, we talked a lot about the housing crisis that's facing the country. And, and that is what we're going to put forward for our opposition motion today, based on the views of everyone in our caucus. Bonjour, Boris Proulx du Devoir. Vous avez dit tout à l'heure euh, en anglais que vous vous opposez au projet de loi 21, mais je pense que vous n'avez pas précisé euh, quel aspect du projet de loi 21 vous n'aimez pas et quoi exactement euh, vous avez dit à François Legault, le premier ministre du Québec, là-dessus. Comme j'ai dit en anglais, personnellement, je m'oppose à loi 21, mais je ne déposerai pas une loi comme ça au fédéral et je vais toujours respecter les chambres des compétences des provinces. Et pour moi, j'ai un style de respecter les autres paliers du gouvernement. Et il y a des différences entre moi et le premier ministre Legault sur certains enjeux, mais je vais toujours cibler sur les enjeux en commun, comme la création de richesses, la relance économique, et je vais toujours respecter euh, les décisions de l'Assemblée nationale euh, au Québec. Euh, les sondages suggèrent qu'une majorité de Québécois sont en faveur du projet de loi 21. Je, je crois que, par respect pour eux, vous devriez peut-être expliquer quoi exactement dans le projet de loi 21 vous appréciez pas. Et si vous aviez François Legault en face de vous sur ce sujet, vous lui diriez quoi? Comme j'ai dit, j'ai beaucoup de respect pour le premier ministre Legault. On a une, une relation solide. Et c'est possible d'avoir les points de vue différents, mais tout en respectant un partenariat sur les autres uh, enjeux. Um, le débat sur la laïcité, c'est un débat unique au Québec uh, à, à cause de... parce qu'il y a une, uh, une différence avec l'identité québécoise et, et une histoire sur la laïcité et l'État au Québec. Et c'est pourquoi c'est une question pour l'Assemblée nationale et pour les Québécois. Mm. Mais comme j'ai dit, comme un leader fédéral, je ne déposerai pas une loi comme ça au fédéral. Merci beaucoup. Thank you.